Hi there, so uh, welcome to uh, the first segment of lecture three, uh, which is about uh, pressure vessels. We're going to start doing some examples using the circle, having a look at how we calculate stresses um, and using the particular example of pressure vessels. So here's a pressure vessel. Um, it's a CO2 fire extinguisher. Um, and so, so there. And uh, the important thing with these, get a fire. Um, you want a fire that doesn't blow around, so you don't want to use this on paper, actually. Uh, it works by cooling the fire down and suffocating it. And you pull the pin, hold it out, put up the tube, and squeeze. The important thing is don't put your hand on the tube, because as the CO2 expands, it cools, and so you'll freeze your hand. But we're not interested in that. We're interested in the pressure vessel. So a pressure vessel is something like this. It's a container that contains a pressurized fluid. There's lots of these chemical process industries and there's an awful lot of engineering science that goes on around making these safe because of course if they break then as all the fluid escapes it can break it in two and make a very large bang uh, which can kill people if it's a large pressure vessel, kill even tens and hundreds of people. There can be some very bad industrial accidents and if the fluid itself is um, uh, a, a nasty chemical product that can also then cause problems as well. Right, so pressure vessel explosions are something we tend to want to avoid. Um, so we need to be able to calculate the stresses in them. So if we think about this, the way we calculate stresses in sections is we make an imaginary cut like we did with the inclined plane. So if we make an imaginary cut through this like that, well, what's going to happen to this side if we chop off the left-hand side? If we chop off the left-hand side, uh, sorry, my left, your right. If we chop off this side, your right-hand side. This side's going to go shooting off over there towards Hyde Park. Um, and what's going to happen is uh, it's going to go off that way. So if we balance the forces acting across the cut plane, there must be a stress that's restraining it, and there must be a pressure that's propelling it, um, that's acting on these ends here. And similarly, if we were to look at this end, well, there must be a stress that's restraining it and a pressure that's propelling it. right? So that's how we would do it. So let's sketch that out. And that's a general method, actually, is making a cut plane through a material um, and balancing forces across the plane. Because if it's in static equilibrium, then uh, there must, the forces across the plane must be in balance, otherwise it would be going somewhere. It would, there would be a net force acting that would cause it to be in motion. So if you're dealing with statics, then that cut plane method is a very common method for uh, assessing stresses. So let's, let's sketch it out. Let's draw it. So um, we've got our, our pressure vessel. Uh, let's imagine we're thinking of a cylinder again. So there's my cylinder, something like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an imaginary cut through this thing. Dot, 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 dot. Means I'm going to have a cut plane there. Um, and uh, if I actually do it for this end, so then I've got my cut plane there, and if I wipe off the material on the side that I'm taking away, I'm going to take away that side, then the forces across this cut plane must be in balance. So if I've got a cylinder here with some thickness to it, then it's got a hoop stress running all the way around it, something like that. Uh, sorry, uh, an axial stress. It's along the axis of the tube, right? So I've got an axial stress that's acting on the walls. Let's call it sigma ax, uh, or we could call it uh, sigma zz. Depends what you like. Um, and that's acting on the walls. Just for clarity, I'm going to remove those. And on this area here, that area here, I've got the pressure that's acting on the other side. So let's put the pressure on. So we've got a pressure here that's acting on the inside. And if there was no stress, then the pressure would propel it off that way. Uh, and conversely, if there's no pressure, the stress would, would, would take it that way. So that's the, the balance. Then we just need to do a force balance. So we can say sigma x. And I'm going to make an assumption now. I'm going to assume that this is a thin-walled vessel. That is, I can do this. I can say that the area it's acting on is the circumference of the circle times the thickness. So this is 
uh, a pressure vessel of diameter 2R uh, with a wall thickness T. And that's going to be balanced by the pressure which is acting on an area of pi r squared. Now, I could say that uh, it had an outer radius which was equal to an inner radius plus t. And then I would do the force balance like this. I would say sigma x um, uh, would be uh, times pi r outer squared minus pi r inner squared. So that's the area of the of the circle that the stress is acting on. Uh, was equal to p times pi r inner squared. So I can take the pi's out and cancel them out, and I'll substitute r o for being r i plus r t. So that's r i plus r t squared minus r i squared, but um, is equal to p r i squared. Now. When I expand this out, I'll get an ri squared minus ri squared plus 2tri plus t squared minus ri squared. So those will cancel. Sigma x ba -dum, ba -dum, equals pri squared. And if t is small compared to, if t squared is much less than uh, 2 T R I, that is T is much less than R, then this approximation will be good. So if it's thin, in this case thin means T is much smaller than R, or 2 R in fact. So in that case this approximation will be good and we don't have to do any tedious expanding. So that's the axial stress. Now the other thing we can do is we can figure out what the stress is around the hoop of the cylinder. So that is, if I come back to my fire extinguisher, the stress that's acting around the hoop, so around that direction there. Now, then what I would do is I would take my cylinder, so here's my cylinder, but I'm something like that, and I'm going to slice it vertically. And what that's going to leave me with is it's going to leave me with a, a half cylinder, which is going to, once I've chopped off the front, which is going to look something like that. Huh. Once I've chopped off the front half of the cylinder. And then I'll have a hoop stress acting here along an area that's of length L, let's say. Let's say the cylinder's of length L on a thickness T. And I've got it balanced by a pressure that's acting on the other side of the, on the inside of the thing. So then I've got my pressure there. So now I can do a force balance and I can say sigma hoop, sigma ho, sigma hoop. Um, uh, so ax was axial, h o is hoop. Um, sigma hoop, that's acting on an area of two, t times l, and there's two of them there and there. And that's balanced against a pressure which is acting on this area, which is 2r, that's that amount, 2r times L. And the L's are going to cancel and the 2's are going to cancel so I can say that sigma hoop is equal to PR over T and in this case I can say that sigma axial is equal to PR over 2T because I can pull the 2 pi R down and cancel an R and a pi. Um, and so so I can now write down the stress state that's acting on a little element in my, in my cylinder, so the one that's there and there, if you like. So if I've got my, my whole cylinder again, there's my cylinder. Um, 
What was it like? It was like that. So oh. it wants to be like that. And I'm imagining a little piece of it that's there, a little s shell that's there. And I'm looking at the, uh, the axial stress and the hoop stress. And thus far, we found the stress state of being is, if I go r theta z, then the th theta theta is pr uh, over t. That's the hoop stress. And the axial stress, that's pr over 2t. And we've got another uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 to find. OK, now hopefully you can see there's not actually any shear acting in this situation. All the stress acts to do is inflate the pressure vessel. So all the shear stresses are zero. And the other thing is, if it's thin, a thin uh, body can't support any stress in its axial dimension. We can illustrate this with a piece of paper. So here's a thin body. If I have a stress acting on here, well, it's going to flop and change shape. So if it's static, it can't support any stress acting through its axis. This can't, it would buckle, if you like. So um, we can say immediately that the uh, radial components are all zero. So that, that's these guys, these guys. So that's our stress state, really simple. Um, so now we can uh, use Mohr's circle to do things like find the principal stresses, say. Um, and uh, to find the maximum shear stress in the problem, or something like that. Um, so, uh, do, 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 um, let me just have a quick. Um, yeah. So let, let's let's now think about a problem. So, in the notes on page ten, we have a, an example for a Mohr's circle. And the example is that we have a, a pipe which is of uh, diameter 10 millimeters, so the radius is equal to 5 millimeters, has a thickness of 1 millimeter, and it's pressurized to an internal pressure of 50 MPa. In addition, a shear stress of 50 MPa is applied. So that must be, if it's a thin vessel, which it is, uh, then that must be a sigma uh, theta z is equal to 50 MPa. So in our stress matrix, what we've got here is we've got 50, 50 MPa, and we've just got to work out uh, the PR over T and the PR over 2T. Um, now, one thing to note is that 50 megapascals, you need to think about pressures for a moment, 50 megapascals, well, a bar, that is an atmosphere, that is 760 millimetres of mercury, if you're American, uh, is equal to 10 to the 5 pascals. So, uh, if you look at a, a gas cylinder, uh, you know, typical diving cylinders are inflated to 200, 220 bar, um, and typical gas cylinders, that sort of pressure, 200 bar, 300 bar, something like that. Um, this one, uh, this is an aluminium 6061 T6 alloy, uh, so it's in the T6 temper condition. Um, it's three litres in size, and it's pressurised to 212 bar. So that's 21 megapascals. So 50 megapascals for our pressure vessel here is a really big number, actually. That's a really big pressure for a pressure vessel. But that's worth remembering and, and just knowing. People tend to use bar and pascals fairly interchangeably. So if we want to work out uh, PR over T, that is the hoop stress, uh, which is sigma theta theta, of course, then we've got 50 megapascals times 5 over 1. And notice the millimetres will cancel. I don't need to worry about any 10 to the minus 3 metres. It's just going to go away. So that's 250 MPa. And sigma axial, sigma ZZ if you like, is PR over 2T, 
which is just half that number, notice. So it's 125 megapascals. We can write it down immediately. So now we can put that into our stress matrix, and we've got 250, a 125. And the question in the notes now asks us to find what the principal stresses are and the maximum shear stress. So let's uh, now proceed to draw a circle, and then we can find out what the principal stresses are and the maximum shear stress. And we're going to do a Moore's circle on the theta z parts. So we're going to rotate around uh, the radial axis, if you like. So we're doing, if we're starting out here, here, if you like, we're rotating about the radial axis for our little local component there, our local infinitesimal little cube. <coughs> um, and if we have a Mohr circle, we then say, well, OK, I want to do 250, comma 50. And I'll do 125, comma 50. That's my two points. And I'll draw a circle between them. There's my uh, sigma axis. And uh, there's my tor axis. Center of the circle is going to be at the average of 250 and 125. So that's at uh, 125 plus 250 divided by 2. 375 divided by 2 is 100 and. 87.5. Let me have a look. Um, check that I'm getting it right. 187.5 here. So that's 187.5, comma naught. That's the center. Just make it a little bit bigger. 187.5, comma naught. Okay. Now. That amount, that's uh, 125 and 250 is the half the difference between them. So the difference between them is 125 divided by 2. Uh, you've got 62 and a half. This is 50. Yeah, so I've got 12 and a half times a 4, 5 triangle. How annoying. Okay, it's kind of an annoying triangle. Um, but... Uh, if I go and work out what the radius of that is, uh, let's call that radius big R. We haven't used big R recently. Big R, which is going to be equal to the maximum shear stress, because it's going to be this amount here at the top of the circle. Um, big R at tor max is going to be equal to the square root of 50 squared plus 62 and a half squared. Um, and that's uh, going to be 80 megapascals. According to my notes, I'll just check. So if I take 50 squared plus 62.5 squared, 6,406, 80.03. There you go. So, um, so now we can work out that the principal stresses are this number and this number. That's 187.5 plus minus 80. So that's uh, 267.5 and 107.5. And this is, in the Tormax condition, I've got 187.5, 80. So the principal stresses, I need to write down the answer, always important for any question. The principal stresses. are 267.5 and 107.5 MPA and tor max is equal to 80 MPA. So I can write down the stress matrix in two ways. Where am I going to write down the stress matrix? Let's write it down here. So I can rotate it up by this angle theta, which we could find. Uh, and I would get to the principal stress condition. And then my stress matrix would be, by convention, 267.5 um, and 107.5, 0, 0, MPA. We've still got to write a unit, remember. 
on a stress matrix. If we had rotated to the Tormax condition, so we rotated back by this angle, um, then we would have a situation of a Tormax of 80, 80, and we'd have 187.5, 187.5 MPA. And those three stress matrices, OK, you'd still have the zeros of, of, around the radial axis. Those three stress matrices all describe the same state of stress. They're just different axes. We've rotated the axes. And in this case, it's a rotation about R. Um, so that's how you use Mohr's circle to solve a stress problem, and how you calculate stresses in pressure vessels. Um, so that's the end of this segment. What we'll do in the next segment is we'll do some more examples of doing more circles and doing pressure vessels. So see you then.